Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. This is our match reaction for Aston Villa 2, Leicester City 4. If any of you haven't checked out the fan cam, go and have a look at that initial emotional reaction straight after the game. Bottled up. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, check out Martin and Ryan's reaction from that. A um, couple of hours after the game, so... You start thinking that you? you start gathering your thoughts of what you've just watched, what went wrong, what was right, if anything. Um, you then start looking at the bigger picture again. Um, we will do a more in depth debrief, we'll do that Monday. That'll come out Monday where we have stats and everything like that. But this is just our general reaction. So, in the comment section down below, uh, let us know your reactions to the game. What were you pleased with? What weren't you pleased with? Um, but you know, I mean, if if I'm thinking it, welcome the show, Ryan and uh, Justin as well. Um, all right, kid. I'll, I'll kick us off and then uh. We'll go from there. Um, you know, going into the game, we were in good form, weren't we? Really good form. Um, and I do remember last week speaking about the home form and and us having two different styles of play, the away form and the home form, and trying to merge the two together a little bit and really get a good performance. Because under Emery, I would say at best performances have come away from home. I think they are the better performances, standout 90-minute games, whereas the home performances, we've seen bits and bobs and, you know, I, I liked this, but this was bad, but we still did this. We still got the points and we fought back in this one. So, you know, we haven't really had that home 90-minute performance and I felt like we would have that performance today against Leicester. I felt like... Emery was saying the right things about challenging his players to get into the top 10. He spoke after the game as well about wanting to connect with the supporters more and give us the performances that he feels like we need. But it just wasn't the case today, was it? And I am a little bit disappointed with the way that we played. I think we've let ourselves down a little bit. And I don't want to come across like... I'm being really, really negative, but I'm just talking about this 90-minute performance. I think we let ourselves down a little bit today because I don't think we we delivered and I don't think we turned up at the right moments when we, were, when we needed to turn up. Um, I think we started the game pretty, pretty well. I think we went ahead. And then we've seemed to have this <sighs> problem this season season where as soon as we concede we concede another like I mean as soon as we score we concede that's a trait this season and it's really annoying because the crowd starts to get going we start to get sort of like on the front foot a little bit and then we concede so really frustrating really frustrating to concede um but yeah it's just frustrating and you know it's sloppy goals bad bad goals today and that's what I'm saying about not stepping up at the right moment when we needed to we could have we could have not conceded all four of those goals today and individual errors and moments of lapses of concentration lack of communication boiled up to four bad goals today um and I mean that 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 one where Martinez passes to Kamara, and then Kamara just sorts of turns, and that's a horrible, horrible goal and uh, frustrating. And I know playing out from the back, a lot of you in the comments are going to say you absolutely hate it, but I, I, I still don't mind it. I still don't mind it. I think playing out from the back, you know, has so much reward, but that just to me that weren't even playing out from the bad back bad that was just a bad pass and a bad decision to turn inside the 18 yard box it wasn't one of those moves where like 
we was on the left hand side and then it'd go to the right hand side and it was like squeaky bum time like he's passed it to him and then he's passed it to him and it's like what's going on it was just it was a bad pass um so yeah it's just bitterly frustrating but go with you then justin what are your thoughts on that good evening lads um i'm not as upset as as, as you pair were definitely after the game Obviously, I don't want to win. I don't want to lose games. I hate losing. I'm a bad loser. And it was bitterly disappointing because, like you said, we're going into it in good form um, against a team that's been struggling generally this season. I think we all pretty much thought we'd win the game. Um, and at 1-0 up, we've started well. You, you think, OK, we'll go on and win the game now. It'll be you know, another good game to win, another three points on the journey. And it all went horribly wrong, didn't it, unfortunately? I, th- I still think there was more positives than negatives to come out of the game. I think if you take it as a 90-minute performance, I thought we kept the ball pretty pretty well in the midfield. We still look like a, a, a team that's going to be a decent passing side. I think the key moments today let us down. And that's where we were poor. Ollie Watkins finishing. I know he scored one and he and he got the I mean you know, that, that, that one he scored was so much more difficult than that one he fumbled. Yeah, I mean the one that comes across the goal, isn't it, from Luca Dean. He, 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 was it Luca Dean? I can't remember who, who smashed it across to him. It might have been Buendia, actually. Um and, and he's just got to sort his feet out and put it away. Back post. Most top strikers gobble those chances up. Yeah. You know, early Haaland has scored 25 goals, basically all of them like that this season. And so when you, you've got to be on it, haven't you? And and this is his Achilles heel. Uh, I thought he did really well. That was a real striker's poacher's goal from the Emi Buendia crossbar. Comes in and, and, he, and he snaffles it. Great. Um, and, he's, and he's hit the ball across and he's got a deflection for the second. But we, we've lost it with four pretty poor defensive errors today. I'm... All four playing out from the back. I should state that now, and I think that should carry on. I that's the way Emery wants to play. That's the way he sets his teams up. That's the way all the top teams across Europe play. Now we're in a period of of adjustment to that style, so there's going to be problems. There's going to be mistakes. The mistake for me there was Emmy Martinez needs to be a little bit more aware, I think, and think, okay, we can't always go short. We can't always go into Kamara or to the two four, to the two centre-halves that are sitting either side of him. There's got to be a time where you think, okay, this one's going long. 99% of the time, I think they're going to play out from the back, and I think that has to carry on because we're in a period of learning, aren't we, under him? So, yes, you have the odd mistake. I think Kamara, once he's turned and once he realises he's under a lot of pressure, I think, again, he's got to clear it very quickly there. So it's a it's a double mistake really, uh, and all of our own of our own making. They didn't really look like they were at that point really going to create anything. Uh, the second goal again, it, it's it's a real it's a real mistake, isn't it? You know, Luca Dean. You know, Luca Dean is 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 he's just in no man's land, isn't he? It is a good ball in. Um, but I don't know what he's thinking because he's just not switched on at all. There's a player on the outside of him which he seems to be looking at. Yeah, he's, he's, he, more, he's more focused on that player. Yeah, but there's a player marking him and he should know that his player's here. And obviously, you defend your goal, don't you? And and you could see with Tyrone Mings' reaction when the ball comes across, um, it whipped the ball in and, and he's just got a free header. It, it's, it's really bad. I'm certainly not going to call out Kamara for losing the ball in midfield because, again, 99 times out of 100, he gets himself out of all those positions. And occasionally he's going to get caught, isn't he? That's just the nature of football. And to be fair, I thought that was the, probably their best goal of the game because they've nicked it in midfield. They've driven it forward a bit and he's put a lovely ball into a runner and he, he takes it well. He takes it around Martinez and slots it really nicely. And then in the second half, I thought we were really good. In the second half, I was just looking at the stats. We've got 72% possession in the second half. We've had 12 attempts. You know, so we were the team that looked more likely. And I always felt if we could get the equaliser, we would go on and win the game. And they've just caught us with a little bit of a sucker punch. It was a, a nothing ball, really. And I think, again, nine times out of ten, Moreno clears that ball into midfield and we and we build again, don't we? So... 
four really, really poor goals to concede. You know, we've scored two. We should have scored another three or four. The problem today was, I think, the high line. The high line against the counter-attacking team. It's it's very difficult, isn't it? Especially when you're making the mistakes. On top of that, you're compounding your own problems, yeah. aren't you? Uh, and I think that's something he will look at. But again, like I keep saying, we this is a. I don't want to say it's a free hit to the end of the season because it sounds like I'm giving up on the season. And I'm certainly not because there was an and there is an opportunity maybe finishing in, in Europe. I, I've never been of that thinking myself. I've always been of thinking that you've got to. Let's just see the season out. Finishing the top half, which was the minimum objective this season, it was that's an improvement on last year. And let's kick on. So, so, so a lot of things compounded to make this this defeat happen today, and I don't see many of them happening again very often. I really don't. I think the manager will go away and look at it, and he'll think, okay, we've got to do this better, we've got to do that better. He's studious in when he he looks back at games. But the big plus point for me was Emi Wendy. I thought he was outstanding today. I thought he, he was really, really good. He could have scored twice. He's hit the bar twice. And he's looked the player that we um, that we signed. But you look at the 90 minutes as a whole, disappointing. You look at the bigger picture, we're on a journey to a much better place. And, and that game today, I've seen nothing in that game that doesn't, that doesn't change my opinion that we're going to be a very good team come next season. Right, yeah. Yes, hit the nail on the head there, Justin. Very calming. Um, obviously, <laughs> obviously, me and Luke. He was, he was be... probably watching our fan cam, thinking, "I've got to, I've got to uh, sort these pair out later." <laughs> no, calm, I like it. I you like are the, the calming head of. Uh, you are the calming head amongst us. Um, yeah, I've sort of come home. I've calmed down a bit now. I've cooked myself a nice Thai green curry. I've washed the kids, nice. put them to bed. Chilling now, but of course, the bigger picture. You know, no, nothing changed. Today's result doesn't change the bigger picture. Look, we're, we're learning to play out the back. We're learning to play a high line. We're making mistakes. We're getting brutally punished. Um, but as a match reaction, I'm desperately disappointed. I'm, I'm yeah. frustrated. Of, you know, we, me and Luke, we had a good pre-match, didn't we, mate? We went out a couple of beers in the social, got chained to a couple of Irish lads who was very, very complimentary towards the... The podcast, we had a couple of beers in the ground, again, chatting to people. We had a real good build-up and everyone was buzzing for the game. Like, you know, we, was, we had the opportunity to get into the top 10. We hadn't, we hadn't been there for such a long time. We've seen Chelsea dropping points and dropping poor performances, uh, Liverpool rocking. So it was a good chance, you know, Leicester rocking up with no winning five. It was such a an opportunity to just... Just go a little bit further up that league and just muscle in with the with the likes of Brentford and, and Brighton who are flying and then Liverpool. You, you've seen the Liverpool score come in, they're 2 0 down, and they and so you're thinking, come on, come on, let's get let's get in it. And we go one nil up and, and it's looking good. And yes, the the first goal, you know, it's a poor mistake and it is poor and it's happened. You don't we don't mind making mistakes as we're learning, but this has happened. Maybe twice, but it definitely happened against Brighton, didn't it? When Martinez played yeah. to Louise, Louise got stuck, and it's happened again today. So um, I don't want to see it again, really, this season. I don't want to see it again ever, to be fair, but it, it is part of the learning process. Um, but then we get our noses back in front, and I'm thinking, that's it now. We shut up shop. We don't let Leicester back in, but they do. They do with mistakes, and it's just you know, real... Bad day, man. And I know bad days can happen, but this one, every chance they had, you know, they, they, they broke that high line with the counter-attack. And that remains one of my main concerns when, when playing at home, really. Liverpool completely exposed it. Um, so we just need to find that balance. And, and that balance wasn't there today. Collectively, as a team, it was it was poor. And, and, and in parts, collectively, we, we were really good. But we have just... we gift wrap the points to Leicester who come into the game with zero confidence, zero momentum, and we've wrapped up three points and set them back up the motorway with them. So it's, it's, it is it is disappointing. And uh, we have been brutally, brutally punished today. And, you know, they say the Premier League is the hardest league in the world and, and no game comes for free. And that just proves it. You know, you, you, you give a team a sniff and they will take that opportunity. They will take that chance. 
Henry mentioned. You, you have to look at the Everton game this morning, though, Ryan, to, to know that. You know, yeah. they're playing yeah, against yeah. Arsenal, they were absolutely flying. Everton got no confidence. The fans are revolting in all ways. Um, and, and they've gone and beat them 1 0. Yeah, and they should have been three or four up by half time. We was watching that in, in the and pub, it, in the social. This is the thing as well. It, it, this league's tough. Every every team in this league can be, can beat anybody. And um, we, we've had a couple of comments on the fan cam one saying, you know, we're going to lose three in a row now because we've got Arsenal and Man City to play. I just think you, you can't look at it like that. You cannot no. look at the next two games and be like, we're going to lose both those games. I, I, I just can't, you just cannot look at fixtures like that because who knows? Who knows? We, we could... And what I'm saying is, I think we're better now with the two games we've got coming up, playing the way that we play, sort of that away from home vibe performance. And that's where I think we're at our we're at our best at the minute. So, um, you know, with those two games coming up, then who knows? Who knows? I mean, we've we've just lost four two, but I'm saying I think we can get some out of Man City and Arsenal, but. But that's the way the manager will be looking at it, Luke. You know, yeah, like, we've got no doubt that it, it, it's for him. It's irrelevant who we play next. It's a chance again to implement what he's trying to do to us. That, that that's simple as that. Regardless yeah. if it's Man City or Barcelona or Real Madrid or Brazil seventy, it doesn't matter. You know, we, we've got to stick to our principles. We've got to stay steadfast in our approach. We've got to be. We've got to be just. Very, very single-minded and tunnel vision on on what, and he will. That's the way he, he attacks everything. You know, one of the big issues for me today is the chances, the chance conversion rate of you know from from attempts to to tar- hitting hitting the target. They've had nine attempts today, and they've hit the target five times, scoring four goals. We've had uh, other than the goals, attempts. Justin, which Martinez didn't really have a chance with any of them, did he? Because he he was left no. exposed. Apart from that, he hasn't had a shot to save all game. Well, no. But you look at ours, we've, got not, we've had 19 attempts. We've only put four of them on target, you know, yeah. and we've scored two of them. So And there, if, and there if, were scuffed efforts as well, you know. You yeah. know Watkins, too many touches before yeah. he gets his shot away. Bailey, Bailey just yeah. no conviction with his... With yeah, his yeah, the big finishing. chance in the... In the um, yeah, when Deer pulled it back to him. Yeah. Um, so we're just lacking that yeah. conviction. And I never felt it all game. I think that's why... I was, I was sort of expecting, I don't know, maybe 65, 70 minutes. I was expecting the sucker punch goal. Uh, I didn't really wholeheartedly believe we were going to get it, you know. I just I just felt like we lacked that conviction. Yeah, with, uh, with goal uh, and half. That, that's probably how I felt as well after the game. Probably still do. I, watching us today, it, it didn't, f- and I said it on the fan cam, it didn't feel like an Unai Emery Villa team today. And for me, there was just some, just some so, missing. Something in the air, wasn't it? Whether it was five percent worth of aggression or or something, it just didn't didn't feel like for all the ball that we had, I never really felt like we were going to start creating real guilt edge clear cut chances in the second half. Uh, one thing that I would just like to say about playing out from the back, because I know we're going to have loads of comments about playing out from the back, is that. Just because we've conceded a bad goal today from playing out the back, it isn't a time to just be like, rip it up, get rid of it and no. stop doing it. We've no. got to create a philosophy and a style of play at Aston Villa and an identity. And we have to persist with this because in the long run, we're going to be far, far better. And there will be probably some more mistakes or whatever, but we've just got to keep going with it. We've got to keep going for it because Emery wants it, and um, I think know. I think that's what he means. In because he mentioned it again, didn't he, in his post match um, his post match reaction about that connection with the home fans, and but I think it's a connection with the performances, and he wants to deliver a style for for, yeah. for us to enjoy an attacking style and to play attacking football with a high line. It's risk football as well, isn't it? Because you're yeah. risking what happened today. But eventually, when he gets the players in that he wants and, and he's suited, I think we're gonna we're gonna be very entertained at Villa Park. And and I'm, I'm glad that he's bringing that approach because 
you know, for years we've we've been starved it, haven't we? So you know, we want, think... we want to we want to see exciting attacking football at Villa Park, and that is what Emery's just trying to trying to find that balance to. And you know, we've been caught out a couple of times, but it, it, it happened against Man United. We were buzzing with that, and Wolves was stagnant, wasn't it? And 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 then now today, well, I think you know, like I said earlier, I think. Most of the top teams across Europe play out from the back. Most of the top international sides like to do it as well. What's the alternative? You know, you, the alternative is every goal kick gets lumped up front, and you, you're hoping for a fifty-fifty. You know, that's Wimbledon of old, isn't it? And that's you, you know, Emery likes ball retention. He likes us to keep the ball. He likes us to play with the ball. He likes us to build up from the back. He likes to use his tactical sort of ability to, to work out patterns of play and ways of opening other teams up. And you can only do that when you've got the ball. So it makes sense that you're not lumping it from the back. And I'm not saying that, like I said about the, the first goal, we conceded there is always an opportunity. And Tyro Mings was always very difficult doing this, knowing when that yeah. to get rid of it. Just get rid of it. That This is a moment to get rid of it. Go yeah. long on this occasion. But it, what will, for me, and this is what I keep saying, the longer term vision is when there are better players in these positions, these mistakes become less and less. And once it's ingrained in the in the philosophy of the club, you know, we I know we're all going to watch the under 23s next week. It's going to be interesting to see the style that they're playing with because you would hope that, that whatever the first team are doing, the reserves, the 23s, Replicated. the 18s, the kids, yeah. they've all got to be playing like that because. You know, you want you want you want the whole nature of the club, the philosophy of the club, to be singing off the same hymn sheet, and it, and, it, and it, there will be mistakes. You know, there's not a team in the world that doesn't concede a goal that that doesn't come from a mistake. That's just the way nature of football, isn't it? And it's just bitterly frustrating. It's happened four times in one game, and I think that's what fed into the, probably the, you know the, the atmosphere within the ground, and even the players that you were talking about, you know, feeling like you know it wasn't like an Emery performance. When you make three mistakes in the first forty five minutes, then I think they are a little bit like reticent, aren't they, to, to get on the ball more and and, and try. Yeah, and I think I think some up. of my annoyance as well, Justin, come from we, we made them three mistakes in the first half, and then we come out for the second half. We made a couple of substitutions, but then. Within that first five minutes, they had two guilt head chances, didn't they? I know the first one was offside, yeah. but the second one, he should have put that away as well. And then I, I just think the mood got killed again then, all mm-hmm. straight away. Not nerves, isn't it? It's nerves when you can see bad goals. You know, everybody's thinking this is one of them days. And when you have a game like this, like the Forest game years ago, the five all, and we've all seen games like this, when it's like a basketball game, it's just backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Yeah. You know, and these games, they just happen. They, that's It just happens from time to time. You get a mad game when it seems every time a team gets forward, they score a goal. You're just not going to get too... Don't get too down when we lose and don't get too over the top when we win a game this season because it, it's a project, isn't it? It's we, We're building towards something. Yeah, and one player who is getting better and better. He's getting better and better. When dear? When dear? Um, Come on, Argentina. He's he's looking he's looking good he's looking good he's looking strong he's putting himself about a bit more he he has a you know he had a good sh- he had the shot for Watkins his goal in there and then he had the one that was added onto the bar so I think we're starting to see a bit bit of a different level from Ben Wendy now which is um, really pleasing to see uh, Watkins took his goal well thought he had an okay ish game um, Louise was. All right, Kamara. We've spoke about Kamara. Yeah, I don't think you'll see Kamara have a game, a game, another game like that all season. I just, no. you know, he's, that is one in twenty. Now we've had players of Villa have had one in two poor games, and you're thinking, oh god, if he has one bad game in twenty, that's going to be it, isn't it? I mean, we've lost in the league two out of eight under Emery, and we've had some really tough fixtures. So perspective is a lot of thing. Like, like you say, when you look back at it a couple of hours later. And Buendia is looking like you know today looked like our record signing, didn't they? And that's that's fantastic yeah. because he's a very important part of our squad, isn't he? Conversely, I thought Coutinho didn't look very good when he come on. I'm worried about his form and, and what happens to him this season. Um, but we'll see. Uh, but on, on the other hand, I thought Duran looked lively when he come on as well. He's, he's quick, man. Yeah, Duran's quick, isn't he? <laughs> he look he looked proper lively. Yeah, he's a big um, when, unit as well. Yeah, he's, he's 
really, really quick, to be fair. So uh, it's nice to see him get on the pitch. Excellent. Didn't get didn't get that bullet header, did he, that I wanted, but uh, you know, save, save that for the Etihad. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it there then. <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave it there. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll do our, we'll have our player ratings out tomorrow as well, so uh, more content coming. Uh, we are going to under 23 games as well uh, on Friday, so we'll have content for that. We'll have all Man City content and debrief on Monday we'll go more in depth so plenty of content um, cheers for watching uh, subscribe drop it a like comment your thoughts up the villa up the villa up the villa <laughs>